Hey there, it's Luke here for the M5 Stack official channel. I'm taking a trip down memory lane today with some nostalgic 8-bit video games. What's that got to do with M5 Stack though? I'm using this Atom here to create a tiny little console. We can play it with all kinds of Bluetooth devices. So let's see how we can get started in making this little tiny console. The project we're going to be using in this video is called ESP 8-Bit. We'll check out the GitHub of this awesome project. Currently it supports such classic systems as the Atari, the NES and the Sega Master System. It's designed to output a composite signal from the ESP32 which is compatible with PAL or NTSC TVs which have a composite in. It also supports various Bluetooth controllers such as the Wiimote and Classic controller and all sorts of other Bluetooth keyboards and so on. So let's go ahead and download the code. Once that's finished downloading, we'll need to go into the Arduino folder where all your sketches are kept and extract the contents of the zip into a folder called ESP8-Bit. Now we'll fire up the Arduino IDE. For both the M5 Atom and M5 Atom Lite, we'll need to select the ESP32 Pico kit from the board list. Then we'll need to set the upload speed to 115200. And lastly, we'll select the port. Now let's open the sketch and there's one or two things that we need to change here before we get our game on. Depending on whether you're in the US or the rest of the world, you'll need to change this line to NTSC or PAL. Next we'll need to choose which console that we want to emulate, whether it be Atari, SMS or NES. You can only pick one for now. We don't need to worry about games for now, as it will preload a bunch of demos into the flash partition of the ESP32. So now let's go ahead and upload the sketch. To test I have two jumper wires connected to pin 25 and ground of the M5 Atom. Then an alligator clip connects from pin 25 to the inner signal pin of the video wire. And the ground wire connects to the shielding of the video cable. To pair a Wiimote or other Bluetooth device, you need to press the sync button while the device is turning on. The demos are fun to play for a short while, but I want to get some of the classics on here and make this much more sturdy. So let's see what we need to build the tiny console that I showed earlier. Aside from the trusty soldering iron, we'll need an M5 Atomic DIY Proto Kit, an M5 Atom or M5 Atom Lite, and a PCB mountable RCA jack. The pins on the RCA jack are too big to fit through the holes of the perf board, so I'll make some markings first, then clamp the PCB down nicely, then use my drill to make the holes nice and big enough for the legs to fit through. The space in the Atomic DIY kit is quite limited, so I'll trim off some of this plastic in order to minimize the height of the jack. Now I'll place the jack through the holes and prepare for soldering. First I'll solder these two side pins. These both connect to the center of the barrel which will connect to the signal pin. The pin on the underside connects to ground. Now let's wire everything up. First I'll attach the signal wire to the contacts and then solder the other end to pin 25 or the SDA pin of the proto kit. Then I'll solder in the ground wire. Now that's all done, let's pop it back in the case. And with a little bit of adjustment, everything fits in there nicely. What a thing of beauty. This little device measures in at just under 5cm by 2.5cm. To connect up to the TV, we simply plug the RCA jack into the atom end, and then into the composite input of the TV, and if your TV has a USB port, we could plug the M5 Atom directly into that. This way you can leave it plugged into the back of your TV, and it's unobtrusive, you'd barely even know it was there. To connect up your controller, make sure to press the sync button so your device is in sync mode before you turn the device on. 
In a few moments, you'll notice a green bar which shows the device's name. Now back to what I mentioned earlier, let's put some classics on this device. There's a little bit of setup involved, but once we get there, it's easy. First, we need to get the ESP32 Sketch Data Upload Library. There's a link here at the very bottom of the ESP 8-bit GitHub page. Follow the link and go to the release page to download. If you're doing this on Windows, you can just follow the steps that they've put on this page. For Mac, the setup is just a little bit different. We need to go into our Applications folder, right-click the Arduino icon, and select Show Package Contents. Then we go Contents, Java, Tools. And here is where we need to copy that extracted folder. Now reset your Arduino IDE. And now in Tools you'll find the ESP32 Sketch Data Upload option. First, what we're going to need to do to use this is to create a new sketch. You can call it anything you like. Once we've done saving that sketch, then we go into Show Sketch Folder. Here we'll need to create a data folder, and within that data folder, create a folder named Atari 800, NoFriendo, or SMS Plus, depending on which console you're emulating. We need to place all of the games within this folder and make sure that they don't have long names. Just keep it simple. Once you've put your games in that folder, go back into the Arduino IDE, go into the Tools menu and select ESP32 Sketch Data Upload. At the bottom, it will now say Spiff's Uploading Image. And when done, we'll have Spiff's Image Uploaded. Now once we reboot the console, it will automatically play whatever game was at the top of the list. If we want to play anything else, we can press the home button on the Wiimote to go into the menu, and then we can choose our game from there. The menu button will vary depending on what controller you're using. Besides the M5 Atom, of course there are other devices we can use, so long as they have pin 25 exposed. I tested the M5 Stick Classic and the M5 Stack Core, but annoyingly since the speaker is attached to pin 25, you get this irritating buzz and there's no way to cancel it out without disconnecting the speaker. Using the schematic on the GitHub page, I hacked together this prototype for the M5 Stack Core, which was also able to produce the sound with a few extra components. You just can't beat those classic blippy tunes. And that's about all we have time for today. Hope this got you inspired to try out some 8-bit gaming on your M5 stack devices. If you like this, make sure to leave us a comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.